Hey there, Miranda Wilson here with another fun lesson idea from Science Journal for Kids. Today, we're going to focus on an activity to identify plastics. It's really hard to recycle properly if you can't figure out what plastic you have. This is especially important for kids to be able to do on their own. They can even teach their parents what they've learned afterwards. This activity can be done with all ages and is even easy for elementary school students. The first step is to collect plastic. The great thing about this activity is that students can get directly involved by bringing in samples of plastic from their daily lives. Just remind your students to make sure their plastic is clean. You could even encourage participation by challenging them to find the weirdest pieces of plastic. Another great thing about this activity is that the only materials you'll need are some buckets or pans, or even just an available sink for a float test. If you want to see what a float test looks like, you can check out a short video demonstration that also contains some additional information about plastics. During the first part of the activity, students will observe a variety of properties for each plastic piece they have. They'll record things like how flexible or rigid the pieces are, whether they're clear or colored or opaque, if it looks glossy, or if the plastic floats. Students then use the plastic codes worksheet to help them identify the number of the plastic pieces. The second part of the activity is to send students home to assess the types of plastic they find there. Younger students may need help from a parent to find all the different sources of plastic in their homes. They will keep a list of plastic products and try to think of ways those materials could be reused. There are also questions available to help students think about plastic recycling in their own homes. There are lots of extensions to this activity that you can chat about with your classes, like what your local recycling rules are, and what the recycling process actually looks like, and why some plastics just aren't recycled. This is also just one activity from a collection of great activities on waste and recycling from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources we highly recommend checking them out. You could even head over to the EPA's Recycle City simulation and look at all the different ways a city can recycle. This recycling activity would go great along with our article titled, How Can We Recycle Plastic More Sustainably? Researchers discovered an enzyme from bacteria that can break down the chemicals in plastic. They found that the enzyme can do this at lower temperatures and more quickly than other enzymes. It also breaks down plastic into more pure molecules that scientists can then use to remake high quality plastics in a closed loop system, as opposed to using new fossil fuels. We have other articles about plastic and recycling for you to check out as well, like can computers help us recycle more plastic? And what happens to plastic in the soil? Don't forget to take a look at our videos at the bottom of the article page when you're planning your class time. There's always a video meant to introduce the topic of the article to your students. For each adapted article, we also provide an audio version of the article being read for those students who might need some extra help with their reading skills. You can access our audio versions on the web page for each adapted article or on the Science Journal for Kids YouTube channel. That's all for today. If you'd like more teaching tips and ideas for lesson planning, please check out the audio or video versions of our Lesson Ideas podcast. Also, make sure to check out our Ask a Scientist videos for short interviews with some of our researchers. You can find them on our YouTube channel. If you have questions or comments, please share them in the feedback form on our website, or head to Facebook to join our official community group. You can also sign up for our free monthly newsletter to learn about our latest content. And as always, please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.